Okay, we're up to round number five at the Outer Box Norway Chess. And it's the battle of the challengers. Caruana against Karajim. Karona is the new challenger to the world champion. Magnus Carlsen, they will play in November. And Karakin is the former challenger. He, well, he gave Carlsen quite a match, taking him to two tie breaks. But let's have a look at the standings before we go on. There you go. So after the four rounds, Carlsen is leading. Well, no, this is after round two. It looks strange, didn't it? Didn't it? Here we go. Yeah, here we go. Round four. Carlsen on plus two. But now we have the old challenger. Hello, here I am. Karakin. Uh, yeah, a nice game that we saw against MVL in round four. Uh, so many players on uh, uneven score still. And you can see that Ding Liren and Fabiano Caruana. Um, as you know, uh, Ding Liren had a bicycle accident. He had to have a surgery because of his hip. So this game was postponed, but it later turned out that uh, he had to withdraw from the tournament, unfortunately. So uh, none of his games will count towards the standings. So we'll see after the standings. After this round, his games will, will not count. Um, so those who already drew against him, of course, those games will count towards uh, a rating, but not for this tournament, not for the standings. Because those have played them, those that haven't played them, you can't, you can't equal that. But before going on to, to the game, uh, I didn't post a video yesterday, but I had a very good reason for that. I had a long day where I, I went to the game, Iceland, Norway. Speaking of challengers, we're going to the World Cup. It's going to be so much fun. So yeah, I was on the pitch. Uh, I took this video. We're doing the Viking clap. And then, now we're gonna score. Come on. Bring it in guys. Viking clap. There's a chance, he shoots, poor defense, and kill me! And the video cut off. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Unfortunately, we ended up losing, losing the game, but it was very careless. We made some late substitution, we were up 2-1. And uh, a goalkeeper error, but uh, we're optimistic, we're gonna do well. But let's now move on to the actual game. Challenger versus Challenger. Caruana against Karakin. Caruana had the white pieces. And he opened with C4. Already a bit of a surprise. It seems like the consensus is to go E4, E5 in every game in the top level. But C4, a nice change of pace. The English opening tends to bring out more you know, maneuvering and dynamic possessions, in my opinion. Let's see. Knight F6. Knight C3. And Karakin goes for uh, the Sicilian reversed in a way. So this is like e4, c5, e5, c4. Knight f3, knight c6, e3. Now bishop b4, looking like a reversed Russell Limo in a way, queen c2. But the white has the extra tempo, which can always be useful. Queen takes e3, queen e7, and up b3. Caron uh, decides to put the bishop on the long diagonal. He has acquired the bishop pair. Black. Okay, he will get easy development with d5 coming. But white has the bishop pair, a long term advantage. So now some normal moves castles, bishop to b2, rook to e8. There was pressure on e5 pawn, and you want to play d5, not d6. So rook e8 makes a lot of sense. a3. White is threatening to expand, so black prevents that with a5. h3. Dynamic, because, okay, we're, we're not, you know, revealing our hand. Maybe he wants to castle queenside at some point and play g4. Who knows? But now, b6, bishop to e2, bishop b7, and now white finally reveals his hand and castles kingside. 
cutting it goes for d5 so uh play now resembles a sicilian with colors reversed an open sicilian after d5 but i think white is very comfortable here he's got the bishop pair if he plays d3 we have a headshot but keeping the pawn on d2 has some good qualities and this is what black often tries to do in the sicilian in the timeline of sicilian you, you keep the pawn on d7 which with colors reversed is d2 and uh, that gives you some extra options you can go d4 in one move and as you'll see later in the game having the pawn on d2 covering the pawn on e3 can be a good thing because now e4 was played by karakin and i think this move was yeah, somewhat somewhat criticized by some sources uh mainly because now this bishop is very strong and it turns out after knight h2 okay it's not a good square for the knight but it will re-emerge later now queen g5 and perhaps karakin might not have appreciated how 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 easy white's play is after f4 he's challenging the pawn uh on e4 in a way, I mean, if you don't take... Did he did he play f4 or f3? Well, this is a PGN, but... Okay, f4. I think you have to take. He took on f3. And now knight takes f3. And knight re-emerges. And we have this... We have two pawns in the center. And the bishop pair. So a very, you know, cool dynamic position for white. He has also opened the, up the f-file. And this guy remains here, a monster bishop. So it's not clear where, where Black's play is coming from. He has no pawns in the center, so where, where are the pawn levers coming from? Where are the pawn breaks? Looks like white is in firm control here. Queen to g3. Rook f2, simply intending to double the rooks at some point. Rook a to d8. Bishop to c4. That's logical. There's going to be pressure on f7 coming up. And now Karakin decides to retreat here with a knight to f6. The main problem with that is that despite having this strong bishop, why can give it up for uh, quite a concession to double the pawns on the f file. So White has given up the bishop pair, but of course some big targets now on the f file. And what's more, we're all, <laughs> we're all dressed up, good to go here on the f file, for doubling, attacking this pawn. Also this square here on f5 can be very vulnerable for a white piece a knight or a bishop rook a to f1 immediately rook to d6 and yeah many ways to continue here uh carona went with b4 pawn takes pawn takes and now you can't take on on, on b4 at first glance, it might, might look like the intention was to play something like queen b3, attack this guy and attack here, but I think black can at least squirm here with knight d5. But I think uh, a better option is, is actually to take on f7, because king takes f7, queen 2 takes c7, and then we can take this guy. Rook e7 looks nice, but not after you see knight g5. If queen takes, we take on d6. When f6 is hanging next. And overall, catastrophic uh, for black. A simple move, let's say. Okay, you have to keep control of this guy. Like king e8, there's uh, queen b8 check. And this pin here is deadly. You can't go rook b8. So we have to go king d7 and, and then I start picking up material. So taking on b4 was not an option with a knight and Karakin went with uh, rook to e7 b5 knight to e5 and knight to d4 we're threatening a really really big fork here so bishop c8 was played I don't think we had time for this even if we did I mean of course we play here and yeah the problem is we have to play queen here, and we even have time to take because we're attacking two knights, and maybe even to give a check on g4. So this is out of the question. So Karakin had to cover the f5 square bishop c8, covering the big fork here. King to h1. 
black boss may be threatening to take on h3, so white gets out of the way, king to g7, and now bishop to e2. Actually, uh, I th yeah, I think it was at this position where it was kind of the last chance for, for Karakin to, to create some problems with f5. And that, this is a very sneaky move and forces white to find some very accurate moves. Um, the main idea of the move, uh, and we need to find a black move kind of for white. Uh, I don't know, let's say queen here or something. The threat is knight g4, threatening mate. And you can't take it because then rook h6. So this is the point of f5. And after f5, okay, white has to take. But there are some very, very tricky things here to uh, to consider. Let's say bishop takes f5, rook takes f5, knight takes c4, queen takes c4, and rook takes d2. And even though white is better, I mean, this is closer to a draw. There are some other lines, but basically f5 was... was uh, the last chance to, to complicate things. Instead, king to seven was played. And now bishop e2, king h8. And now Caruana starts a nice regrouping of this bishop because queen to c3. Caruana, uh, Car Caruana is just going back and forth here, king g7. Now bishop d1, king g8, and bishop c2. Very nice. Okay, queen h4, what to do? Move the king or, or the queen. Uh, it seems black is virtually planless here, the queen comes back, and now bishop f5. Of course you can't take because of the knight landing here, so bishop to b7, bishop to e4, bishop to c8, and now the queen threatens to penetrate, queen to a3, king g7, and queen a8, and here things are very difficult for Karakin, and he didn't actually find a good move here. The main problem is, if you cover the bishop, I will simply take and then give this big fork here and take the queen, I will be up a piece. And other moves don't seem to promise much either. Bishop to uh, d7, bishop f5, and now I'm threatening to take. You remember before when he played bishop f5, bishop e4, black would go bishop e7, but here, here there's really no way to go. And big problems for black. So, in the end, and down on time, Karakin went for the desperado, bishop takes h3, but Caruana, he uh, calculated everything quite nicely, took on h3, uh, Caruana, king g1, now rook takes d4. The last kind of trick, and the trick is if uh, Caruana actually takes on d4, which he didn't do, then at least after queen check, king, bishop d2, knight g4, black can fight here. I mean, he has five pawns against, you know, two pawns for the for the missing piece, but the white pawns are, are a little bit weak. I think white should still should be able to win here, but at least he would really have to work for the win here. But in these positions, Caruana tends to be quite good at calculating, and he found bishop d2, queen g3. Now he just took the rook, and after rook g4, okay, you can take on, on g4, and you're off a piece, and, you're, and your pawns are much better than in the variation before when we had the pawn on d4, now we have connected pawns. But he just played rook f3, why not keep an extra rook after queen e1 check, bishop f1, time control reached, and... Karakin realized there's, yeah, not much to play for here. He's down a rook, and there's basically no counterplay whatsoever. So, so he resigned. Uh, a good win for Caruana, who now uh, joins the group on an even score. But still, Carlson leading, and we'll have to have to wait and see if anybody can challenge him. But for now, not one of the two challengers, it seems. But We'll see. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.